Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Abhas, and with me here is Team 14380, the Blue Bot Builders from Northgate, Australia. They have been absolutely amazing this season, just such an incredible robot. They're currently in the top 50, uh, with a very high auto teleop and endgame OPRs, and they just have such a unique design that I think we'll see a lot of teams shifting towards uh, as we get into the later parts of the season. So we're going to go through their whole robot, code, design, everything, all that and more coming up on First Updates Now. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today. Fun is continuing to grow and looking for new ad partners for the 2024 season. If your organization has a positive message to spread to our over 250,000 unique viewers, go to firstupdatesnow.com slash contact to get more information. Okay guys, so the first question uh, I want to talk about is just your approach to this season in general. You know, I think with the whole hashtag side game as you guys call it, it's a very unique approach to the game and I absolutely love it. So walk me through how that happened. Uh, at the start of the season, we uh, looked at the different, at the obviously at the field, and uh, we wanted obviously the robot needed to be small, low enough to the ground so that it could pass through the the gates. We also wanted to be able to fit through the trusses easily because congestion near the congestion near the gates, as well as we thought that a lot of teams were going to be dropping in the center of the robot. So yeah, we wanted to try and go to the side of side of them so that we could try and uh, we could score while they could also score. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. So let's uh, start off with your drivetrain. You know, walk us through anything special uh, with it. Uh, one question I have, you know, right off the bat is with your guys' aluminum. You know, you guys stay very true to the Blue Bot Builder's name. So do you guys anodize your aluminum or is it spray painted? Walk me through that. Yeah, absolutely, it's anodized, yeah. That's that's really cool. And so just as your drivetrain structure as a whole, can you give us an overview of it or some things you think that are really special that allowed you to integrate it, uh, integrate your whole robot really well? Well, when we started designing, we didn't really know what shape we wanted to go for, but we just wanted to know that. We knew what we wanted to put on it. So we came up with a whole different shape, so we kind of just chose the best looking one, which is, if you can kind of see on this outside plate, that's the shape we went for. And for the inside one we thought we'd just keep it simple, just keep it a big block, and then do as much pocketing as possible to reduce the weight. Yeah. We also want to have enough space for our uh, for our pulleys to be at the bottom, so that when we do the hang, we can winch the uh, the string down over here, while also fitting our uh, odometry into our uh, design as well. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. And how have those uh, Go Builder odometry pods been for you guys this season? We found them. Uh, it worked great. Yeah, we found them amazing. Okay. Uh, the uh, inconsistencies in them were barely found any. Yeah. Them. Awesome. Yeah, let's uh, let's jump right into the intake. So, you know, I see you guys have that active intake design. Why don't you walk us through it and, uh, you know, let's hear it. So, yeah, uh, we have the active intake that's this way. So, yeah, we have a counter roller at the, the bottom with a yeah, inverted O ring. That spins it, so you can see that the you can see that the uh, counter roll is actually spinning without a servo moving it. This is due to the an inverted O ring that spins it in the opposite direction. We have two, we have three uh, surgical tubings, but removed one so that we could fit in the sizing box, while also uh, pushing out our transfer down so that there's a clean uh, line between the intake and uh, the delivery system. Mm -hmm. And so talking about iterations, you know, I see a ton of different uh, compliant uh, mechanisms on it. You know, you have your VEX wheels, I think, and then you have your surgical tubing and the bottom roller and everything. So how have those changed throughout the season and what were some of like the biggest changes you made that helped a lot? Um, at, the, at the start, we had a... Uh, so yeah, at the start, we had a different, a, a rounded off uh, ramp, but we got rid of that because uh, we found it more reliable with just using a straight on uh, thing with the, a straight on ramp mm -hmm. with the outer roller. And we also experimented with different of these 
some different of these tires so that we could uh, because at the start we, when we had a complete gecko wheel mm -hmm. go build a gecko wheel yeah, it was too much compliance and it couldn't actually move the, the pixels up so we've uh, had to change the uh, different height of that to get make sure that it's just up yeah uh, yeah we did not find the right surgical tuning on the right thing I think four different types of surgical tuning. We found this one's the best one that's worked for us so far. Got it, yeah. And so I see you guys also have that intake extension going for you. So why don't you walk me through that a little bit, you know, how it works, what it's powered by, um, and, you know, let's hear it. So, yeah, at the start, we uh, we thought of that maybe the horizontals going outwards, but a lot of the, the time, in Australia, there's a, not a lot of time between the, between the season. So yeah, we focused on mainly on our uh, delivery system, but our uh, horizontals, we've uh, got them working. I... Nice, yeah. That's great. And so, now so moving on here. Mm -hmm. ...to actually put into the competition. So we never actually have used them yet. I see. And so now moving on to your uh, deposit, you know, that's really what we're here to hear about. So you guys have a very good understanding of this. So why don't you just walk us through all the different aspects of it and then we'll delve into each degree of freedom well, separately. That was a hashtag. Yeah. And so, you know, I see with that, you know, you guys have like three or four different degrees of freedom. Um, so why don't we start from the beginning? How do you guys pick up the pixels from your transfer uh, and then take them to your deposit? So, yeah, we have a, a, a one-way gate that's from the intake into the, uh, the transfer so that when it goes up, it immediately locks down. So that the force from the compliant wheel pushes it up so that it just passes the uh, the one-way gate, which allows it to fit in two of them. Then uh, we have two axons that bring the uh, the transfer up. And then uh, we have the, the slides that bring it up. We have this this server which makes side game possible due to the position due to the interlocking fit of this server mount. This is because of uh, its pivoting point is at the bottom of the, the shaft so that it can move upwards like this way. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have the movement. We have this movement to counteract the effect of this server here mm -hmm. while also having a uh, a linkage to extend it. And then we have, yeah, the server to extend yeah. the linkage and it comes out. Wow, yeah, that that's just really incredible. Yeah. From a hardware perspective, what do you think was the biggest challenge you faced with this design? So, yes, a lot of the issues with this was at the start we had just one axon bringing it up, but there was a lot of issues with that because the force wasn't equaled onto the other side. So we put in a second uh, axon, uh, axon max to support that movement, mm -hmm. while also, yeah, and then this also created the issue of the current as well. So yeah, we had to fix this. Yeah, that's, yeah. We had uh, another problem with our linkage bars right here. These actually got bent at one stage, we're not sure how, and that did affect us a little bit, we're not sure how much, but these have been a little bit of an issue for us. I and see. also, when bringing the transfer down, it's actually where we have our biggest issues, because sometimes it can get misaligned or stuck, and we have to bring it back up and down again, which takes time, which reduces, reduces our cycle time. Yeah. So we haven't actually had too many issues with the side here itself, but with the, with the actual transfer coming down. And so from a software perspective, with controlling so many servos, are you guys running like an inverse kinematics model on the entire robot or do you have like set positions that you go to each time? Uh, we have set positions and we use FTC lib as well. I see, I see. So now talking about your end game, you know, your guys' end game is also equally as strong uh, as the rest of your robot. So walk us through your hang first and then we'll uh, jump, jump into the drone. So yeah, Alex, you want to talk about the hang, the hang. Well, the problem with the hang, and why we end up with a solution like this, with the rubber band solution. So you can see the 
hook here, which is just a very long servo horn. It releases the two sides of the arm, which just gets the hook up. Mm-hmm. So it's all potential energy to get the hook up. The only motor involved is the actual release. And from there, the hook is able to detach using magnets onto the truss bar. And there's a winch motor in deep in the robot, like right in the middle, just one motor. And that drives both pulleys on each side and hangs the robot. I see. And, and, and ha- has your hang gone through any iterations or was it just kind of, you know, the first time you uh, did it, everything worked of, well? Lots of iterations. Like, because we only had this much space just above the drivetrain to fit both the plane launcher and the hooks. And so originally we went through a lot of different designs to actually just get these up. The idea to have the hook come up and detach was always there, but the method of getting it up has gone through different things like a four bar, just a single arm to come up. Uh, this is a lift, I believe things. Mm-hmm. You were catching through problems with this being really wobbly. wobbly. But we've managed to fix that by just really tightening these rubber bands and shortening this uh, part of the uh, hook arms as much as possible, so it's reduced that wobble. And we also moved this uh, this half of the, the rubber band down so that there's more increased com- tension, increased tension on these uh, on these arms as well. I see, I see. And so now finally, you know, talking about your drone, I've seen some fantastic videos from you guys walking through your mechanism, um, but why don't we see it here in the interview? If you can explain how it works and, you know, we'll talk about more questions after. So with our drone launcher, we have really limited space. So we need something that was really small that would just fit onto our side of the robot. So this is what we came up with. It uses rubber bands. We tried linear slides, but they were just too big and we couldn't get enough power out of them. So we decided to use rubber bands instead. So we got inspired on YouTube by other people we've seen done paper plane. They may we saw a paper plane uh, crossbow, so it could launch paper planes using rubber bands from a crossbow. We thought that was quite cool. So we tried to figure out how we could use that on a robot, and this is what we came up with. So how it works is the rubber band, the plane gets loaded in, the rubber band is stuck here, it gets pulled all the way back, then we bring it back over over the knobs here. And there's two knobs here, those are two different power settings. So if, like, uh, for example, if we had a weak hill rubber band, which has happened sometimes, we put it on the maximum power setting and that gets it over. Or if we have a really strong rubber band, then we put it on the weaker one and that would also get it in the right zones. But we also use an Axon Micro to, yeah, to, to, to fire it, would you? I can maybe manually push it. There we go, nice. there it goes. Not sure how well you saw that. Probably was pretty fast, but yeah. And that, that's worked fairly well for us. Awesome, yeah. And so, you know, we've gone through the whole robot and a bit of the software as well. I think the last couple of things I want to talk about are your guys' game strategy. You know, you ended second uh, at the Australian National Championship in qualifications, and then you were also the finalist alliance captain. So your game strategy is obviously very sound, and teams have a lot to learn from it. So in general, you know, do you guys go for mosaics, or do you just try to get as many pixels on the board? What does that look like? Um, so throughout the game, it's a combination of both. So yeah, the first thing what we try and do is in auto, we, we try and get those two orange pixels on the backdrop. But to, so that we can try and create that first mosaic at the start. So then we can try and cover it with the different uh, with the, the, white with the white. Yeah. And then we try and uh, then the next one is to make the next mosaic. So yeah, this that allows us to try and get more points, but. Uh, well, the other strategy is, so we let our life partner to always go set on the backdrop so that we can always go to the side. Mm. Getting that, because side game is not as fast as traditionally going this way, but it's mainly to do with the congestion from the backdrop. So if you can get two robots to score on the backdrop at once, that's better than the waiting for another robot to do it. Definitely, yeah. And so another question I have uh, with that, when it go, comes to intaking, do you guys do a lot of practicing with like picking up the pixel stacks, uh, you know, when they're left over from autonomous, or do you prefer always going for the wing or something else entirely? Um, so we always uh, go for the wing because uh, it's just, it, most of the time it's an easier path for us. And it's just sometimes difficult for us to get off of, this, off of the stack because uh, we don't want to accidentally get three stuck in. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of the times in, the, in Australia, there's 
the the rules are a lot they're a lot harsher because a lot of the clarifications haven't come out. So we, we try and mainly just stick with the wing because it feels safe for, for us to do. Mm -hmm. Fly up like so much so that we know that whenever we get into the game, he knows exactly what to put down. Mm -hmm. We don't need to keep it at all. That's how much we practice. Yeah. And so, you know, my last question for you guys is looking forward to the rest of the season. What are your guys' next competitions? Uh, you know, do you plan on doing any off-season events or anything like that? And, uh, you know, what, what plans do you have for the robot going forward? Um, so, if you're... Uh, the, the, this is the APOC here in the, uh, in the June and the, the, some off-season events. So, we're thinking of doing. So, yeah, future improvements would be the... Uh, making the horizontals more reliable. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also, you know, making sure that sometimes uh, the hooks can't catch when a, a very big hit happens to your robot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just some smaller improved, just more improvements to make the robot more reliable. Yeah, the biggest thing would definitely be those horizontal slides. We can get those working, that would be really nice. Yeah, no, that, that sounds great. So. Bluebot Builders, thank you so much. I think this has just been an incredible interview. There's so much to learn from your robot, and you guys have had a fantastic season uh, so far. So congratulations on everything. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Abbas, and this is Team 14380, the Bluebot Builders. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.